Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Game Groups podcast, the all-encompassing weekly gaming podcast from the Goodnight Groups. My name is Matt, and today I'm joined by Mike, Josh, and Paul. How are we all doing today? I feel like I was here last week. You were. You were. We all were. Oh, that's crazy. (laughs) Josh, how are you you doing, Josh? I am doing wonderfully, Matt. It's uh, long weekends coming up. Uh, plans out the wazoo. I can't complain. I can't complain. Plans out the wazoo. All right. Fourth of July coming up. Exciting times. Paul, our Canadian who doesn't have Fourth of July. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, what are your weekend plans? Well, today is Canada Day, actually. Um, oh, we have that right around uh, Fourth of July. Uh, well, you know, I think a lot of us are kind of not to get too deep, but there's a lot of like indigenous rights issues and stuff in Canada right now. So I think a lot of people are kind of. A little iffy on Canada Day, a little bit like some people are boycotting, some people are kind of like talking about it. So, yeah, I'm kind of in the boycott crowd this year. So I'm uh, I'm not really doing anything right now. I'm just kind of hanging out. And uh, it's also on a Thursday. So, you know, that would really bother me if I if I worked. I would really, I really hate to lose that long weekend. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> yeah, oh no. Mike, how are you doing? Uh, pretty good. No complaints. Just a lot of work to do. All right. Well, <laughs> since work sucks, let's talk about the things that we've been playing. <laughs> Josh, what have you been playing this week? All right. Real exciting answer this time. Uh, it's really different, varied. Uh, it's something I don't really play too much. Uh, I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> oh, uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the new patch came out, 9.1. Uh, you know, it's only been eight months since uh, we've got any new content, so I am like... <laughs> absolutely starving for anything right now uh so i've been playing a whole heck of a lot of it prepping for the patch and now actively playing it so it's been fun i, I really have not played much else a little bit of final fantasy in between here and there but on that pretty much just the patch and it's it's been good it's been fun so far so uh, this is like the first big wow patch that i like honestly haven't really paid much attention to um just been all in on the groups stuff as of late. So tell me a little bit, like, what what are some of the bigger things in this patch, aside from the raid, obviously? Okay, so raid, naturally, there's a huge mega dungeon, uh, which those are usually always fun. They usually turn oh, into Oh, the bizarre, dungeons. right? Yeah. Yeah, yep, that yep. looks cool. Uh, you know, more tour guest updates. And then it's a little over, by a little, I mean a lot, overly systemized with a whole lot of bullshit, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Classic. But, you know, <laughs> we're, we're going to push through because it's new WoW content. And I'm hopelessly addicted. Uh, but I, you know what? It's fine. All right. So you, you just been all in on WoW this week? Pretty much all in on WoW. I'm probably going to, no, once we me. finish, once we stop here, uh, I'm going to literally log all the WoW and just do dailies. Mike, what I'm about you? Give a shout out to Fallout 76, Josh. Oh. I, I did I actually play a little <laughs> bit of Fallout 76. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I forgot in about that. Of you, in honor of Todd Howard, the man, not the cat. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Not the cat. Uh, although he probably could have done a better job with what Fallout seventy six was, and he's a literal feline. Uh, no, but Fallout seventy six, I had a little bit of fun with too. Define a little bit of fun. Exploring. Okay, okay. Exploring <laughs> West Virginia. All right. And, and and dialogue trees, dialogue options. There was there was actually they've done a lot to with who. Who are you having dialogue with? There. <laughs> there are no NPCs, all right? <laughs> no, they added NPCs they, a couple years they, ago, they and it's, all, it's like a full-on game. Oh, now. okay. And, and they added, like, Brotherhood of Steel. I don't know how that works. It's like 25 yeah. years, apparently, whole new sex have already formed. Oh, yeah. Look, they just kind of swept all that under the rug. It's, it's fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, they've, they've got options now. But no, the one person that had dialogue options was actually, actually a, a robot, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> In real life and in the game, so yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike, only. what about you? What have you been, you been playing? Um, so my PS5 came in, and I've been playing exclusively Returnal. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty much addicted to it. Uh, I was up till like 2 a.m. playing it, nice. and I was like, "Oh, I'll just play half an hour." Three hours later, I needed to go to bed because I had work in the morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's really good. Would recommend. Um, it louds itself as um, 
a hard game, challenging game. Uh, it even <laughs> when you load it up, it says this is a challenging game. Oh, wow. <laughs> but uh, I made it to the halfway point without much difficulty. Um, I think I think it definitely can be difficult if you're not used to third person shooters, if you're not used to roguelites, if you're not used to bullet hell games. Um, but it's got it way more of a story than I expected. It has a lot of good story beats. If you like anything that's space, um, almost Ridley Scott esque, uh, I would recommend. The the two biggest criticisms that I've heard are uh, the lack of save points and the RNG in like your rewards. Well, it, it's a roguelike, so the lack of save points makes sense. Um, yeah, it's kind of the entire... Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of the point. I, I've seen that criticism too, and I've been confused by it. Um, the RNG... I haven't had big issues with it. There's only a few guns in the game where I've said, this is trash, I don't want this weapon. Um, and there's been a few times where I've gotten... Um, malfunctions which are debuffs to your characters that have really screwed a run um i had one that said i can't pick up a weapon until i uh i think you use consumables and it took me forever to find consumables to use so i ended up skipping three or four weapons that were four levels higher than me um and it screwed me for the boss fight but i don't think it's that bad i don't i don't know i i I could see the lack of save points, but there are save points. You just need to pay for them. Um, oh, okay. So you can you can save your run. Um, there's like pedestals that you can interact with, and if you have the currency, you can save your run. Essentially, if you die instead of going back to the start, you go back to that pedestal and you respawn there. It's a one time deal. Uh, there's one on every section. Okay. So. It's doable. I I don't know. I I've read a lot of reviews. I saw that it got review bombed pretty hard. Right. A lot of people didn't mm. they didn't know what they were buying, it seemed. Oh. They didn't know what a roguelike was. They it, saw a third person shooter space game. Yeah. yeah. Um it looks different for sure. Just when I looked yeah. it up, I was like, interesting format for a roguelike. I guess let me ask you this. Uh is it is it a seventy dollar game? I okay. <laughs> spoilers i'm gonna spoilers tag this so i thought because it's kind of spoilery um i thought i'd beaten the game um in like eight hours and i was very upset granted i got it on sale for 50 dollars. Uh, it was on sale this weekend oh, on okay. the ps4 store uh, or the playstation store um and then it does like this big, it, it, it's kind of a twist. It kind of makes sense with the story. Um, and you actually only made it halfway through the game. So 20 some hours worth of playing. Okay. Uh, more if you're less capable. Um, if it's a that lot would, more difficult for you. Like, that would be me. It, it'll pad your <laughs> play time for sure. Um, but yeah, I think at a certain point, like, you learn the patterns of the bosses and it's like any other roguelike slash souls like game. Right. You just know what you're doing, dodge and you're fine. True. All right. So. Well, good. Returnal all week. Paul, what about you? Mm -hmm. What have you been playing? You're muted. Wasn't sure if I was muted before or not muted before. Um, yeah, uh, I've been playing a few different games. Uh, I played still kind of casual, but less casual. So um, I played some. I finally got around to playing Yes, Your Grace, which I oh. wanted to play on uh, Game Pass. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it was pretty good. I, I just wanted like a choices matter kind of game. Um, and the dialogue was pretty good and it was pretty interesting. Uh, kind of remind me of playing like the game of Thrones telltale game back in the day had that real feel to it. Um, and in the same way that it had that feel to it, it felt like very little of the things I did really mattered. Um, when I finally got through and finished the game, I mean, I mean it's not too spoilery, but it's, there's, a, there's certain story aspects that happen early on or throughout the game that you really can't change. Uh, 
and it kind of sucks because there's like obvious choices that would have changed that entirely. Um, it would have been nice if they just like kind of if they have like one big unchangeable thing at the very beginning, and it would be nice if it happened at the very very beginning, like the game starts with that choice having been made versus kind of railroading you into it. Didn't love that, but it's a it's a fun game if you're interested in playing some some little pixel choices matter kind of game. Uh, yeah, and also I played. Uh, I've been starting to play Sim City, the 2013 Sim City. Nice. Uh, it's pretty fun. Um, I've tried playing City Skylines before countless times. Uh, I'm just too much of a noob. Uh, it's just like a little too complex for me. Um, I went back and now I'm playing Sim City because it's on once again on Game Pass, and. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It just it just takes like one notch down in terms of uh, difficulty. I find in terms of uh, city management, um, like you know, I feel like oh, I can set up an electricity you know right. generation thing. I can set up a water thing, but I don't have to like run the lines to all the houses. I'm like that's one extra step that I just am not interested in. So yeah, it's pretty fun. I I think I'm gonna get really sucked into for, into that for a while and uh, and do some sim citying. But yeah, it's been pretty fun. Just a lot of like management and. And uh, and simple games like that that uh, aren't too intense, but will definitely take up all of my attention for hours and hours and hours, and I'll wake up in a daze at like four in the morning. <laughs> Were, are you playing both of those on on Xbox or on PC? I'm playing them on PC. Oh, okay, I'm, playing, I'm using PC Game Pass. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I after after you talked about it last week, Mike, I I, play, I tried Phantom Abyss. Um, Ooh, I enjoyed what I played. It's like yeah, <laughs> it's like Fall Guys meets Mirror's Edge, sort of is how I I, I look at it. Um, I should have known. I should have known. You you mentioned this last week, and you you compared it to Portal. I got a headache playing the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I I should have known. Um, yeah, I could really only I I did two runs. I enjoyed it, and then like I stopped playing, and all of a sudden I was like whoa like i need to mm -hmm. close this and go take a break yeah i mean i don't know how much more i can play like it, it legitimately gave me a headache and uh so that sucked <laughs> but the temples were like larger than i thought they were gonna be um and the runs were just way longer than i was expecting i was i was thinking more like it was gonna be a sprint rather than a marathon you know mm -hmm. um yeah and they get uh they get longer the deeper oh, you go perfect perfect yeah i usually end up doing like one run in the, like <laughs> Josh. during my lunch break or something and then never touching the game for the rest of the day because <laughs> it just yeah. takes a long time yeah i i kind of wish there was an option to to just play shorter runs mm -hmm. um so that was a little like i like the idea but i wish that there were more options around the idea um i also played Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I finished it, got the old platinum, uh, 18 hours play time. So like mm. a pretty good amount of game, like I sh on the shorter end for a platinum, but, um, yeah, yeah it seems short for a platinum, but a decent amount. Um, it's funny. There was, a, I think like the platinum trophy is actually a really high percentage. I want to say it was like 12%, which is crazy high for a platinum. Jesus. Yeah, that is really high. So That's like obscene. <laughs> everyone who's turned the game on has 12% of those people <laughs> have gotten the platinum, uh, which is kind of wild because it's also like, it it's an easy platinum, but there are parts where like I ignored a gun for the entire game. And then at the end I had to grind out five levels, which took like maybe an hour and a half, which is not a lot, but like I can see people just like not doing that. Right. Yeah. So, um, 12, but 12%, 12 that has to be one of the higher platinum percentages I've seen. Um, but the game is just pure fun. Um, it, it's pretty much everything I expected it to be, which is good and bad. Um, <laughs> good because it's a good game and it's what I wanted. Um, but bad because it doesn't really do anything new outside of utilizing the SSD with zero load screens. And, you know, there are cool things like going through the, going through the rifts and like these little platforming sections is really cool. Um, and you can see like, yeah, this is a PlayStation five game. It probably couldn't work on the PlayStation four. Um, so that's cool. The game looks amazing. You know, it's, it's a cliche. It's said every single time a new Ratchet and Clank game comes out, but it's like playing a Pixar game. It really is. Um, 
when you look back at the visuals from the 2016 game, you can really see how far they've come. I only had a few complaints. Um, they're all really minor. Uh, so I ran into a few bugs. Uh, a couple times my character would get stuck in like a falling position, uh, but it would fix itself pretty quickly. Sometimes it could look like I could land on a platform, explore the area a little bit, and then it just like instantly kills you. <laughs> so, <All right. laughs> uh, like I thought I would like maybe be cheeky and take a little shortcut or something, but it's like, nah, <laughs> it just kills you and puts you back at the checkpoint. <laughs> so that was that was kind of weird and sometimes the world would load and everything was invisible so i was like on an invisible platform and i would just have to reload the game that happened twice um it's a pretty easy game but there's also weird frustrating difficulty spikes where they're just like throwing so many enemies at you that it's so chaotic you it's hard to see what's happening and that's the difficulty is you just like can't see what's happening um so, but yeah, it's either incredibly easy or you're dying a few times on, on bosses. But like the other thing about the bosses is that there, there's like no variety. It's like the same robot every time with the same yeah. laser attack. And, yeah. but like, I wish they had done a little bit more and gotten a little bit more creative with the game, but it's a beautiful, beautiful world. It's an awesome, fun Ratchet and Clank game. It's what I wanted it to be. I just wish that, it was a little bit more, but good game. Good game overall. Um, I, st I think I still prefer the 2016 reboot from a gameplay standpoint. I liked the planets better in that game, um, but but I think undoubtedly the story and the characters in Rift Apart are just better. Um, really cute characters, cute story. Uh, the dynamics between uh, Ratchet and Clank and Rivet and Kit and, and all that kind of stuff are, are really neat. Um, and fun to see but good game not great but definitely recommend it i mean if you have a playstation 5 it's it's a game to play a lot of fun is it a console seller or would you say probably not um if you're into that kind of game maybe uh but if you're not like a third person action slight platformer type person then no um but fun game Overall, just had a few issues. I think the bugs were weird because you don't usually see that in a Sony first party game. Like, you, like I don't remember seeing bugs in like Last of Us or Ghost of Tsushima. Like, they, it just doesn't really happen, you know? Yeah. Anyway, anything else before we move on? That's all I've got. I've ran the nope, yeah. about WoW enough as it is. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so true. All right. Well, now it's time. I can time. tell you all about my Sim City. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell us about Paul Tobia. Yeah. It's actually Rachelton. Oh, okay. Very cute. <laughs> it's time for the non comprehensive news. If you want the comprehensive news, you have to check out the GG replay. Okay. Very true. So these are the top three news stories of the week for this panel. Number one The Elder Scrolls 6 is still, quote, in the design phase, according to Todd the God Howard, and that's the game developer, not the cat. Not the cat. Very not important. the cat. <laughs> Guys, what are what do we think about this? Josh, what do you think about this? Oh boy, oh boy, uh, I'm not surprised. Um, yeah. I I mean, I was listening to Gigi Replay, not to go back to it, but go watch it. It'll, you know, give you some context and a little more discussion on it. Um, I. I'm disappointed naturally because The Elder Scrolls is like one of my favorite franchises, and I think I'm speaking for a lot of people when I say that. Um, but you, you want to know really what what upsets me more about it than anything else? Why in the hell did they show anything in 2018? Yeah, there was no point. Like I I get it, Todd. Todd, I get it. I'm relating with you here, brother. Fallout 76 was a colossal yeah. ill. Like we we get it, dude. It was bad. You're trying to keep your head above water, <laughs> but like you got to go the no man's sky route. Just keep updating your Fallout 76 and just keep working on the next game. And well, here's I the thing: they didn't need to show Starfield and Elder Scrolls. 6. No, you had Starfield, well, but they I, wanted people. They wanted people to see the name, and then but I mean, they just screwed up another major franchise. So do, is it really helpful at that point to see <laughs> Elder Scrolls Six? I remember a lot of people being like, "Well, we just saw what they did with Fallout 76," so like. It was literally, it was there. Like, I guarantee you at that point, all they had at that point was maybe a map, 
maybe, and that was probably about it. Like, yep. and they and they just didn't go anywhere else with it at that point. They were just like, all right, like some executive up high was probably like, all right, get this out the door. And I feel like, not to speak too highly of Todd, but but I'm going to anyways. Uh, <laughs> I I I just kind of feel like it. It was not. It wasn't necessary, and I don't. I don't think he wanted to do that. I think no. someone else above him probably made that decision. Bethesda's yep. always done it, always done it. Six months, game game launches in six months. I've gone back and watched the Fallout Four panel. I've gone back and watched the Skyrim panel. They mm -hmm. all have so much hype around them because they're like, boom, here's your fucking date. Go have a blast in six months. You're gonna explore this world and be lost in it forever. Not yep. 2025. Good luck, idiots. Enjoy your wait. See you in like, seven years. And it's even like, with Bethesda, it's like, and this wasn't a big game, but like, they're one of the last studios that really gave us a shadow drop with Fallout Shelter too. Like, well, that was the best. That was that announcement was, was amazing because awesome. they they did Fallout Four, and then they're like, hey, it's going to be like five months, and while you're waiting, here's an awesome mobile game to get you in the mood. Easily the greatest like announcement ever. Unironically, getting goosebumps from it because it was so yeah. fucking cool. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't mean, like, believe it. I was so it just, it was hyped cool. for that whole thing. Yeah, Mike, it's, it looks like you have some thoughts. Oh, I have lots of thoughts. Ooh, let's hear, let's <laughs> hear them. <laughs> My first thought when I saw in the design phase was, "Oh, so it'll be out in a year because they don't bug test their games." Um, <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> I'm wondering if and because they did show it off what, two years ago. Was it two? Three years. 2018. Three? Three? 2018. That was three years old. And that was um, just, a title. just a title. So they did show it off. I'm wondering if this has anything to do with uh, the Microsoft acquisition. Because when acquisitions, mergers happen, things get shuffled. I wonder if, and this is tinfoil hat, they saw the direction Six was going in and said, hmm, fix that. <laughs> I would say I don't think that's true, and my reasoning is because oh, every I'm... time anyone was asked about asked about uh, Elder Scrolls Six, and this is just conjecture, I can't remember exactly the sources on mm -hmm. this, but I remember it being brought up, and they were basically saying they're not like there's only one team, they can only work on one thing, and it's it's very unlikely that they'll even start that till they finish Starfield. It's just not like the Bethesda way of making things. Um, I mean, I totally agree with you though. That sounds so right. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I feel, like, I feel like they knew that they had to make Elder Scrolls VI like Skyrim or something, like not make it a games as a service or something like that, because mm -hmm. if they do, they, they might as well kiss their, their entire rep goodbye oh. at this point. It, it's yeah. so tough to say. Cause they, <laughs> it's, they, yeah, it's... But Bethesda's, you know, they always had their design and like build up around, you know, who they were as a company, but things shuffle and change so much with as big as they are now. Who knows? And to be fair, like we also know now that they also spent the last three years, two years, however long, creating a new engine. Yeah. Right. So cool. it's definitely going to have no bugs and be perfect, right? So oh, be, of course. That didn't get the hype <laughs> it deserved. It would be Game Brio point, uh, 3.0. <laughs> what I wanted was the Starfield trailer, the ship to take off, and the character to still be sitting there. Or that would have uh, <laughs> <that would've> been <laughs> peak. Would start, like, start rubber banding into space or something. Yeah. <laughs> All I want to know is, like, are, are we going to get those quick zoom-ins on the dialogue moments? I hope oh, not. Oh, you mean the? You mean the? Oh, you want to talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> As they stare in tears. Look soul. me! Look me in my dead I'm eyes. Blinking. Yeah. The audio listeners that just zoomed in on my face. <laughs> yeah. A la Moira from Megaton. <laughs> yeah, I hey just. There. I I think I'm in the camp where it's like, just take your time. I'm I'm fine with this taking a while. I think. Yeah. Let's see yeah. Starfield. Let's see how that turns out. Let's see how the engine works on that, and then we'll 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 ju we'll judge what Elder Scrolls Six might be after that. Yeah. yeah, I will say too to you, Matt, too, like what you were saying with the No Man's Sky fixing. I think it was you were saying that, right? Um, and doing that with Fallout seventy six. It's just like I think I said this before about it might have been about Bethesda or about a different uh, studio, but it's just I feel like and like that's such a rare thing because. Uh, Hello Games had so much to lose 
um, with No Man's Sky. That was everything was on the line. And if that game right. failed, they were done. Um, so there was like that kind of feeling. And I think they really are truly enthusiasts. And so they went and like went overboard and made the game more than it ever was supposed to be, which is amazing. Uh, and that being said, I think other studios, especially Bethesda, was like, oh, they could have spent a couple years working on Fallout 76, making it better, making it like No Man's Sky style. They don't care. They just started selling more crowns. Like a year in, they came up with like the Fallout VIP thing or whatever and all like they don't care. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's, it's you know that the... was never an option for them. I feel like because they don't they just don't need to do it. Fallout seventy six is one of the biggest games on Game Pass. It's incredibly popular. <laughs> so <laughs> which is insane. Yeah, you know everything I've heard is that it has gotten better. It is, but but because yeah. in spite of what they did, like they they just decided to make they added NPCs. They made it. They got rid of a lot of the online. Like they made it more like a traditional Fallout game to to damage control the fact that, I mean, like they could have made that into a game as a service that might have been more likable. But they were just like, nope, forget this. We don't know how to do this. Let's go back to the Fallout thing. Let's just add in NPCs. We'll add in dialogue trees. Like shut up, ignore the rest of the stuff. And part of it too is it was so bad at launch. Like you couldn't have. You could have done anything and it would be, get yeah. better. You know, mm -hmm. there was there was nothing. Yeah. Um, it is crazy to me that they thought it was OK to to launch that game. What, why, I think I'm with uh, with Josh on that wasn't that was a up top business decision yeah. and not a Todd Howard decision. I, I agree he, with you, but with hubris, but, right? but yeah. watching that Fallout 76, like when they first talked about it, watching that that press conference like Todd yeah. Howard was really passionate about it well it what's seemed. he gonna it just what's works. he gonna do his they, they go listen Todd your entire brand is sounding like really impassioned and genuine and 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 all and true and we true in what game. you're saying if you fucking, if you throw this up we're voting you out works. yeah it just, it just works. works yeah I mean dudes just got a job to do after I mean all. it was it was after it was coming after the fortnite craze people were yeah. wanting more battle royales people were trying to jump on that train I think that was like fall of 76 battle royale mode was what was marketed and there was three other battle royale games that were shown at e3 that year I think and then talk about again, like them moving away from online stuff. That's the that's the thing they've scrapped yeah. now is the battle royale. So it's like mm -hmm. truly, yeah. It's like it's like uh, the people at the top want a multiplayer game because that's what everyone wants. But uh, Bethesda's like, no, but this is the game we want to make. So. Yeah, it's almost like they're like, you. why don't we put this out? We'll make this for you. We'll put it out, and once it fails, you'll see how wrong you were, and we'll put in the stuff <laughs> we want to put in. Like I wonder if there's yeah. a faction like that. Yeah. Just a slight spitefulness, just like sure. okay, yeah, sure, we'll make this because you want it. <laughs> and then look at that, and then Bethesda Softworks gets purchased. So maybe it's like you know, yep. maybe maybe that part of that was to them doing like, okay, we don't know what the fuck we're doing because clearly we don't know how to make money. So we're just gonna sell this <laughs> shit to Microsoft, and they can tell you what to do because clearly no, we don't know what to make. You handled Todd. This man's lost his goddamn mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Any other thoughts before we move on? I could go for hours, but I'm done. Oh, yeah. We should cut it. This one's forever. This one's a forever top. Well, speaking of things that just work and just print money, G <laughs> GTA 6 uh, will reportedly be out in 2025, will include a Fortnite-like evolving map, and will take place in a modern Vice City. This is according to industry leaker Tom Henderson uh, via GameSpot. Previous rumors had GTA 6 taking place in the 80s, but Henderson says that Rockstar wants a modern setting to allow for more freedom, uh, as much freedom as possible, when creating new content for GTA Online. Guys, what are our thoughts on GTA 6? Paul, I'm going to go to you first. I think I have great thoughts about this. Um, first off... I mean, God knows, why would they, 12 years? That's fine. That might be long enough after the money. I just feel like if the money printing machine's still going, because remember GTA 5 was like supposed to come out and then it got delayed a year and then like another year and maybe GTA 6 will be 2025 then delayed till 2027 because the shark cards just keep flying off the shelves. Hmm. Um, but that being said, I feel like, here's my thought about this. I feel like GTA 5 was definitely, I think they knew that they had that hidden blade of GTA Online always there and that that was going to be the moneymaker. 
But I don't think they truly, truly built it around that because they weren't 100% sure. Um, now, I believe they obviously know 100% that this is the most successful thing they could ever do in their life. Um, so I think this is genius. I think this is like a really smart idea for them. Make a for like a Fortnite style evolving map, a game that just keeps a game that's completely built around online, uh, just printing money. And they could probably go like, you know, let's let's make this twenty years. We can go. We'll just keep upgrading the graphics every few years, and we'll just we won't even call it GTA Six. Just call it Grand Theft Auto, like Fortnite, and it'll just kind of keep changing as time goes on. Um, I think I think that's the only thing keeping Five back is just that it's still kind of stuck to that story and that setting. And I think if, if that's more mutable, uh, I think that's really the, the best direction for them to go. Well, you and I kind of talked about it on the, the replay the other day, how like we did. World of Warcraft lasted 15 years so far, right? Um, mm -hmm. 17. So, yes, yeah, it's more than that shit. Um, yeah. GTA, G GTA Online, why can't that be their World of Warcraft? Why do they have to make a new game? If it's printing money. And I think money, that's, I think five is because five wasn't a hundred percent designed for that. And I think a new game uh, that's very next gen and, and very much completely built around being built upon and changed all the time is, is going to be like, like this is the, the most successful media empire or whatever that's ever been media product. I think uh, this new GTA game could just be like a, it could change the landscape of games. I think, I, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like they can do it. We're looking at GTA five. If they build something that's actually made to do that. Oh, that's a good it's point be crazy and, and the one Project thought but before we go to mike and josh the one thought that i really have on this whole thing is this like dan hauser is gone the story guy behind grand theft auto he's gone and this sort of just feels like all right dan's gone let's just go all in on the online like we don't really need the single player anyway and why try to worry about it now that he's gone so look at something like Fortnite, where the story kind of flows throughout the gameplay on like an online gameplay. So maybe that's going to be how it works. All right. Who knows? Mike, yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Um, honestly, not much. Uh, I think the 2025 prediction is funny, but okay. <laughs> um, I think that originated with an investor call. And then this Tom Henderson guy was just like, yeah, that's what I've heard. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't have much thoughts about it. I like GTA 5 because I like the story. I didn't play the online stuff. I did for, I want to say like a month, and I just didn't like it. So it's just not for me. I do see it being extremely profitable if they do just go all out on you know the online stuff. It, it's printing money for them. So um, Vice City is cool. I don't have much thoughts. I, I would prefer to have a GTA 6 campaign single player experience. I know it's probably not going to happen. So I've given up on that, much like I've given up on a bully too. So yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> over with. That's not happening. <laughs> Josh, what about you? Uh, kind of in the same camp. Uh, I want a story, and I'm super disappointed that I don't have a story. Um. You know, you know, not a guarantee, but with the money machine being what it is, I just feel like, like that's it. Or even you know, a half-ass story. One. Even a half, and I don't want it. That's the problem. I don't want a half-ass story because I thought they had really gotten somewhere with the three revolving characters. Yeah. You yeah. know, as awful and like like degenerate as they were, it was fun to watch them grow and evolve with one another. Not necessarily as people because they were always awful, horrible people the entire <laughs> time, but they were, you know, watching their friendship kind of grow as, as it went on was actually genuinely like pleasing and it was fun. And the gameplay was, you know, it's Grand Theft Auto. It's silly. It's fun. Um, and I, that's the kind of stuff I want. I, I personally don't give two shits about the online. I always feel like it's just a bunch of toxic people that just want to steal your shit. And I'm just not about it, <laughs> yep. uh, which I get, it is literally <laughs> called Grand Theft Auto. So I guess I was kind of in yep. for it, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Vice City's cool. Um, uh, you know, that Florida is such a cool setting, at least that area. Um, a lot, a lot of directions you can go with it and it's fun to drive around that area too. Not in real life. It's horrible, but, uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I'm interested to see what they mean by an evolving map. Um, and if like, they're going to like do like battlefield level, like changes or destruction, or if they just mean like, oh, you did X, X happens to this building or Y happens to this street. Uh, or if construction changes, who knows? I, Rockstar is 
even if it's not a really heavy story, I feel like Rockstar is just really, really impressive when it comes to a lot of these things. I feel like they know how to handle it. And I look forward to it. But if there's no story, I probably just won't even bother getting it. It's crazy to think that it's been eight years since I've played a GTA story. Like, I, ha- I haven't played since since the game came out. Um, yeah. You know, I, I had installed it at one point and intended to play some GTA Online, jumped in, just didn't really, wasn't really my thing. But yeah, I mean, it's been eight years now since I've played a GTA story. And it looks like, it, you know, if the next one does have one, it's going to be another four years on top of that. So it's just, it's kind of crazy to think that we really are about to go uh, that far without, you know, with it not being in our lives. Because it was, it was such a big franchise that was fairly regular, you know, as we were growing up. Mm-hmm. That was a blast. Like so many franchises, like Elder Scrolls to, to go back. Yeah. And, and everything else, these the franchise is getting like every four year releases and then it seems like they everyone came out with something in like twenty eleven, twenty twelve, and then they realized they we can just keep selling it. We can just <laughs> yeah. change it a little <laughs> bit every couple years and then people will just rebuy it. Yeah. <laughs> that I, seems to be the exactly the move yeah i don't i don't know it's kind of i mean i'd say unprecedented we're i mean gaming's such a new industry anyway it's hard to really say but it is kind of unprecedented now that uh we got kind of a golden era from like the end of the 90s or early 2000s into like 2010 of just like these amazing franchises coming out every few years and then it's just kind of this huge drought uh or like this weird growing period where games are starting to where online is always there like persistent online worlds are available so companies are trying to figure out how to make that more profitable or make games have more microtransactions or and uh yeah it's it's weird <laughs> i just i just want like a new a new elder scrolls every like four years that was cool <laughs> i don't know i feel like an old man to be honest yeah kind of along those lines and this goes back to the previous uh news story but i guess my my big bold prediction is that we're going to get a Skyrim remake before we get Elder Scrolls Six. I think we get an Oblivion remake before we get Elder Scrolls Six. Yeah, uh, that would make I sense. Mean, there's, Sky, there's Sky Oblivion, which uh, you know. That oh, what would you consider a Skyrim happen, remake? Um, essentially, like just rebuilt from the ground up. No um, way. On, on Creation Engine Two. No way. No, no way. They'll they do it with Oblivion the first. It has all, they, all they're doing, I think, usually... I mean, it's they're so profitable for them to just remaster the uh, like the, the visuals a little bit without having to build everything from the ground up. I don't even think they would ever bother. That's true. Put That's it, true. But put I, it on I, the fridge, baby. I don't, yeah, put it on the fridge. I, I think, I, I think like, in 10 years, you could easily see a Skyrim Legendary Edition. Yeah. Uh, they already, well, they already did the legendary edition. Legendary. We need a new one. The yeah. super legendary edition. <laughs> the, the, the Dragonborn edition. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Do they have a Dragonborn edition? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think they do. Maybe not. Is that the one on microwaves? A uh, fuss row, duh. They, uh, <laughs> they have that a might Dragonborn have been like bundle. their. Yeah. <laughs> Christ. God. Next story. <laughs> let's let's get out of here. Let's get out of the. Entirely, <laughs> <laughs> let's rush this podcast that we're done with. Uh, two days after announcing their acquisition of Housemark, Sony has added. I don't. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Nixus Software to the PlayStation Studios. Nixus is a Dutch studio that has ported more than 15 games to PC. They primarily worked with Square Enix and former the former Eidos interactive properties uh having ported to the tomb raider reboot series and the deus ex games uh and more to pc what does this mean is sony looking to really go all in and porting their games to pc or or are they trying to take this away from I, what are they doing here uh I, I think it'd be the natural way of things at this point I, Xbox went all in, and it clearly has worked for them. Um, you know, worse comes to worse. Like, I'll try to get through my point as quick as I can. Roughly, <laughs> what I think, uh, you know, your hardware is still obviously a big thing for these companies to get out and sell. Um, but I feel like they're pushing the services just as much these days. Xbox, I think, well, more, way more. But way Sony, more. with this acquisition, I think, may be trying to inch their way into this 
and try to get their way into that market a little more. Because the PC market, I mean, you you get you put Uncharted on PC, like I'll probably pick it up and play it. I just can't be bothered to go boot up the PlayStation Four, which I've God knows how many updates I have to go through at this point <laughs> to play Uncharted. Like I just can't be bothered. But if you just throw it here, it is on PC. Go for it. It's you know fifty bucks for the you know whole trilogy. Fuck it, I'll do it. Why not? Um, so I think that could probably be the market they're appealing to if that's the route they're going. Interesting. Paul, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, my thought, uh, kind of as to what Josh was saying, I think it's kind of interesting. Let's, I think you're right. Um, but I also think Sony seems very weird about that feeling about, it seems like they have one foot in and one foot out. Um, uh, unlike Microsoft that has gone both feet into streaming. I mean, the original Xbox One announcement infamously was like very built on online only and, and, and online all the time. And and so I think oh, they've yeah. been trying to edge this way as fast as possible um, for better or for worse. I think at this point for better, but it took some time. Um, but yeah, when you look at Sony, I think they have a lot of issues um, committing. You look at like crossplay, they didn't want to do that for the longest time. You had to get like Epic in there to kind of like uh, sweeten the deal for them a lot, it seems like. Uh, and same thing with this. And I, and I wonder, I have a question to pose a little bit, um, not to derail, but I think that let's, in this scenario, let's assume that they are trying to get into PC gaming or PC ports or possibly even like PC streaming, um, a la Game Pass. Uh, do we think that Microsoft, being what they are with Windows, uh, could pose a problem for them trying to do that. I mean, obviously, you know, Windows is a pretty open platform. You can just download whatever you want. Um, but that being said, you know, uh, do we think they may be at a disadvantage over Xbox trying to break into an operating system that is owned by the people who own the other gaming co company? So I, I have an answer to that, and I'll, I'll just say right now real quick. No, I don't think so, because I think Microsoft wants Game Pass on PlayStation at some point. So I think they're going to play nice. He's such a flex. So I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think... Let me, let, me, let me say this. I don't think it's ever <laughs> going to happen. I really don't think that Sony is... Like, Sony could be struggling <laughs> like hell, and they're not going to put Game Pass on PlayStation. Here's my thing, But that's though. what Microsoft I, I wants. Like they don't I feel like they don't want to put it on micro on PlayStation because they, like they just there was just those uh, you know the Xbox event a couple like a month ago where they were really talking about you know uh, getting onto smart TVs and getting onto little streaming dongles and I feel like they're way more interested in getting you basically an almost free streaming Xbox than worrying I think they're already over consoles they're over their own console they're like let's get on streaming as fast as possible. Um, and PlayStation's like, let's work on the hardware. And I, and I really feel like they couldn't care less at this point and getting on, on, uh, consoles or even PC. I think they're, they're full steam ahead to streaming and giving you like a $30 Chromecast that would basically run all your Xbox games. I think that's true, but I also do think that Phil Spencer wants his service on, on PlayStation consoles. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't? That's That's a huge flex. Um, yeah, <laughs> Phil Spencer is like being way too nice about everything. Right I know now. he's got a great rep. I love Phil Spencer. Um, <laughs> like, like congratulate. I think he congratulated Housemark on their acquisition of PlayStation. It's like, dude, come he on, <laughs> come on. He's working at something, bro. Rolling. He does it all the time. He's always out there just saying like all this adorable, nice stuff to the Sony fans. And he's like, oh, you know, if you congratulations, the PS5 came out today. We're just really happy for you all having to play games. And it's just very oh, yeah. good when he comes in one day and like got sony or something with all the microsoft dollars <laughs> it's like he can it'll be really really it'll be a great payoff I, I i think phil spencer knows that he's winning the uh yeah. whatever war is between microsoft and sony at this point i think it's fairly obvious i think he's on the they, we'll talk about this later but i don't think he's winning a console yeah. war i just think no. he, like i'm saying xbox <laughs> like series x he's is winning better. A, he's winning no. a strategy war i think in yes. terms of like long term he's, like 10 he's winning years. the corporate business war yeah and yeah i think sony got left in the dust after xbox one and microsoft said yeah we don't care about the box anymore <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> If that's true or not, like even if it's true or not, it may take them longer to really work out streaming as much as they're saying. Just yeah. flexing that and saying that and showing something that's consumer ready that it's pretty close. 
uh is just is such a huge flex like it really it's like oh you know you're worried about the console wars ah oh, we just made this box as a stopgap till we have our like super system that's going to change gaming and it's like oh shit, shit. i do want to make one comment on on just a uh anecdotal comment uh because i do have a series x and a ps5 and i set both of them up the same day and when i set up my my series x uh, both of them have the feature where you can download the old console onto your new console and everything's all set up and it's perfectly fine. The Xbox uh, process was a lot more streamlined. Yeah, It was a lot easier. It went a lot faster. The PlayStation, it told me, you got to wait seven hours and keep your PS4 on. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> so I just... Yeah. Microsoft seems... knows software. They're a software company. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. PlayStation very much feels like hardware only and uh, feels like it suffers a little bit for it, but here we are. <laughs> so at the, at the end of the day, to, to wrap this up, I think the three of you would love to see PlayStation exclusives on PC, right? There are some I, already, it, though. I mean, any, I mean more. Anytime there's more, more games well, yeah, available yeah, yeah. to more people, I love it. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm here for it, yeah, I agree. As the resident Sony pony of Goodnight Groups, uh, <laughs> I, I, I agree. I want to see all the PlayStation exclusives on PC. You know, the more the, more the merrier, in, in my eyes. Definitely. All right. We're moving on to moving on. a new game called Cash or Trash. In Cash or Trash, we look at the major upcoming releases for the next two months. I'll name the releases, and then the panelists will say whether it's their cash or their trash. Only one cash for each panelist. We're going to go in chronological order here. Do you guys have your caches ready? I think I my, so. I got my dollar. Oh, ready. yes. <laughs> All right. On July 16th, we get The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Trash. 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 They'd have to pay me to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> to be <Trash>. honest. $50. <laughs> to be honest, this was one of the ones that I was considering for cash because I never wow. played the original or I briefly played it. I know it's not one of the most well regarded <laughs> Zelda games. Uh but I do. I want to play this HD version, although I don't know exactly how well it's gonna work without the motion controls. Because it was sort of built around that, wasn't it? There's you can still use can the Joy-Cons. Yeah, you can use the Joy-Cons. Yeah, but how do you? If I'm using my Switch in, on in handheld TV, mode, how's that going to work? Absolute noob. <laughs> you can just just prop it just up. Throw, it's just stand. throw my handheld around. Okay, <laughs> prop it up. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, July twentieth, we have Monster Harvest. Trash. I don't even know what that is. So trash. Yeah, I, I think I saw something about it. I'm sure it's good. It's trash. It's not for me. July yeah, trash. <laughs> July. <laughs> yeah. We gotta come up with like more dollars in this game because we're just gonna trash. Like there's gonna be like three games that we actually. It's like. okay. The the point is you gotta make a choice. You gotta I make know, a choice I, and live with it. July 27th. I've already made my choice. July twenty seventh, yeah. we have Microsoft Flight Simulator, the release for the Xbox Series X and S. Trash. It's a great game. It's done amazing things, but I'm not getting it trash. I really listen. I really want it, um, but I don't have it a Series X or S. I don't think my Xbox, my launch Xbox One, will be able to do much on that. So uh, I, I wish I would probably. I might cash it if I had anything to do, but for me, it's a trash. There's one other game on this list that I'm looking at, but without it, it'd probably be, a, but for now, trash. Wow. July 29th, The Ascent. Trash. I don't know what it is. Trash for me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't know. <laughs> we did our research today. <laughs> yeah, no, we really did. Uh, yeah. August 12th, Tony Hawk has died and has resurrected from the ashes of a phoenix. It's Skatebird. Ah, love that love that <laughs> i like skates i like birds uh i'm gonna have to trash it though i like skates i like birds but you put them together and it's trash yeah absolutely <laughs> no if this were bird skate we'd have a different story i'll tell you right now i, I, I mean go ahead go ahead 
I love it and will get it on a Steam sale, but right now, trash. <laughs> yeah, actually, I remember look, thinking it looked amazing, but yeah, it's still, not, it's still trash for me. Yeah. The updated this gameplay is... actually looks really yeah. fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks so delightfully yeah. mean, like Mimi, and it probably yeah. would, but I'm going to have to trash it, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Skatebird. I'll come back for you to Sorry. Time. <laughs> August 13th, we have Hades, the PlayStation and Xbox releases. Trash. So here's default. the thing. Here's uh -oh, the thing. Here we go. I uh, I I want to cash it, but I'm not gonna cash it because it's on. It's coming to the Game Pass same day, so I don't even have to pay for it. So that's that's trash for me, but only because I'm getting it for free, baby. I'm very excited about this release. <laughs> You're not allowed to be excited. It's, it's your trash. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm excited. You gotta I'm, shit talk it. It's garbage. Like a raccoon just digging through the trash. If you I'm really loved it, out. you would give it your cash. I'm pulling this one out of the trash. Mike. Uh, Hades was like my pick for game of the year. Yep. So naturally trash because I already own it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to play it. I didn't want to pay 20 bucks for it, even though it looks like one of the best things I've, I've seen in a long time. So, uh, but now that it's free on, on Game Pass on Xbox, I'm in. <laughs> Josh. Hades is one of those games that I really enjoyed. It was fun. Uh, don't really want to play it again, though. Uh, mainly because it's best of them beating it, you know, because, uh, wow, uh, trash. Yep. <laughs> now this next one I gotta i'm starting to realize what we're all gonna pick too and it's really funny but uh <laughs> continue man. august 19th we have 12 minutes trash unfortunately Look, looks great trash for me though cash i have <laughs> been waiting for this game yeah. since they first showed it looks awesome and it looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, just the casting, the gameplay, the storytelling. I'm just like, yeah, I'm here for this. Let's yep. do it. Also, like, it was tough looking at the list. I was leaning to other games, but then I saw 12 minutes and I was like, oh, oh, yeah, no, this is easy. Never mind. It's like, it's perfect for you. It's like a roguelike uh, story game. <laughs> it's perfect. I love branching stories, and this looks like. Yep actual branching storytelling and oh, yeah, not yeah. because the fo sto the focus is the story and you don't get daisy ridley and james mcavoy and only spend you know two hours of voice acting with them right so josh very excited <laughs> august <laughs> no, 20th august 20th madden nfl 22 paul i know this is your cash Oh yeah, you know me. Uh, I love the sports games. Uh, the trash for me. I'm I'm gonna punt that into the old trash can. Is that, oh, did I say it right? Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> my, my man Paul is steady waiting for Bass Pro Master 2022. <laughs> I'm gonna drop back and pass this one right into the old dumpster. Nice. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to trash it, but if it was if it was NCAA, it'd be cash. Look, don't tell me it's your MVP edition and not put the fucking MVP on the cover. Okay, <laughs> put Aaron Rodgers on the cover. <laughs> anyway, uh, August twenty fourth, Kenna Bridge of Bridge of Spirits. This is this was one I I'm looking forward to, but it's a trash. Uh, uh yeah for me uh it sounds i i think i vaguely looked at it looks like a pixar game that's cool uh trash for me just uh, there's a million games like this for me I, that i have in the backlog that i never got to so. pixar game this isn't ratchet and clank oh. <laughs> <laughs> looks a little more dreamworks to me the car the cars too of of uh pixar that's games. true this does look like a sh <laughs> shrek swamp of sorrows <laughs> <laughs> No, it's gonna be it's gonna be trash for me, unfortunately. August twenty fifth, we have Psychonauts two. This is my trash. This is a trash for me. This, this I think we all, exactly where I thought it was going. <laughs> we all know where. Yeah, I've been waiting. The only I knew one of us might diverge, and I thought it might be Mike, but we're all going to that same place. All right, Just say it. Say it, Matt. Look, say it, Matt. Look, I wasn't gonna give a different answer. Okay, I'm the. I'm, of course not. <laughs> August thirty first, it's New World. I don't cash. look cash. It's cash. my cash. It's, cash. Just, it's just, cash. <laughs> look, this game is a bunch of MMO players on a podcast together. All we talk about is classic. Wow. And then you put an MMO on here and you have the first MMO in like five years and you ask us.
Look, I don't care. It. This game is going to be absolute dog shit. I know it. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's going to suck. But, but it's the first major Western MMO release since Elder Scrolls Online. So, look, you get my cash for that. You, you, yeah. you are giving it an attempt. You get my cash for that. I, exactly. I mean, like, I, I want it strictly. I am fully expecting this. I'm going to get to like level 30 and be like, why the fuck did I get this <laughs> yeah. game? Yeah. But guess what? I'm going to spawn into that world. There's going to be 40 other dickheads running around me. And I'm going to be like, this is amazing. Yeah. And I'm just going to be on the cloud nine. I'm paying for that feeling to be like to, for the hope of surprise. I know I won't be pleasantly surprised and I will, it'll end up being dog shit, like you said. <laughs> but that one, like, what, two two weeks to a month period where I'm in it, it's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be like wow all over again. And because I'm a goddamn sucker, I pre ordered this game a year and a half ago. So uh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's go, Jeff Bezos. All right. Um, <laughs> At least it wasn't uh, a six hundred dollar alpha that you for this one. You're, that's you're true. That's true. Ashes of creation. Uh, <laughs> Ashes of creation. Stephen Shreve, you. if you're watching, I'll take a I'll take an alpha code. I'm not paying five hundred dollars. I bought my PS five. <laughs> I can't afford your your alpha. <laughs> um, can't afford your alpha. To recap. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you get a solid week in that alpha. <laughs> to recap, uh, Mike gave us 12 minutes for his cash, and the three hopeless romantics uh, picked New World for their cash. Mike's just sitting there thinking, like, listen, I love MMOs too, but you guys are fooling yourselves. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're just sitting around here like, please, just a crumb of serotonin, please. <laughs> I'll take it, yeah. I, I know it's terrible. I don't even care. I need. I just need it in my veins. All right, let's level up to the next uh, the next segment here. Next segment is a new one. This wasn't in the last episode. This is called The Big Question. All right, so this isn't necessarily related to any news, but it's a big question that I came up with that could be just generally in the air amongst the gaming world right now. Here's the big question. Are the so-called console wars, quote, coming back? After years of little difference between PlayStation and Xbox compared to consoles of the past, are we entering a new era of competition with the battles for exclusive services, acquisitions, etc.? Who wants to go first on this one? Yeah, I can. Okay. All right, no, Mike. No, 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 Mike, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's hear it, Mike. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, you could call it a war, but Microsoft is been doing an arms race for the past three four five years i won't and hear this Sony's goddamn slander on my podcast <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying the games are better it's just the strategy is no. airtight when you have billions uh, of dollars all right, like. continue mike continue no the uh the games aren't necessarily better but uh ex so microsoft um i'm going back to our to my schooling a little bit because we studied Microsoft a lot because Microsoft has a ton of liquid cash, uh, most liquid cash out of any corporation, I believe. Um, and they're just throwing their weight around and doing whatever they want with it. So, and they've been doing that for years now. Um, I think Sony's been winning the console war for the past 10 years, right? Since the PS2. Um, PS3 was a little bit rough. Xbox 360 had a clear advantage there. Um, but PS4 blew Xbox One out of the water. The exclusives were great, everything like that. And Microsoft decided to take initiative and shift the battlefield to something else. And I think Sony's realizing that a little too late. Um, 100% the corporate warfare is muck in terms of acquisitions and whatnot i just think microsoft has been fighting this war way before sony even realized that it was here's the thing like so i i, I agree with this okay the problem is that sony's never going to be able to compete monetarily that's simple fact yeah. okay so that yeah. whole that holds them back from a pure quantity standpoint it's sort of inexcusable that xbox had so few games last generation uh, I guess they're making up for it now. Um, they still don't have as much, but there's obviously a lot in the pipeline. I don't think like there. I don't think there is an Xbox Series X exclusive game right now. I don't think that exists. 
um, yet. Um, that's that's partly by design because they like that you could tr play it on it. Like it's like it doesn't matter where you play it; it's on Xbox, you know. So they're like, "Hey, play it on the one, play it on whatever. We don't care what sells." Right. <laughs> um, I think that Sony will will continue to have high quality games, but I think Xbox is going to start when you look when you shit out thirty games a year, whatever they're going to start doing here, you're going to have quality games and. Um, from a pure quantity standpoint, they're going to have quality in there. Um, is it going to line up with the best on PlayStation? Who knows? We have to see it. I guess we have to see it first. But uh, clearly, um, Xbox is 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 making this a, a, a console war now, right? The, the, the console wars are back and Xbox has made this a console war and Sony clearly is trying to catch up right now with their recent acquisitions with Housemark and what we know is coming with Bluepoint and to the, uh, today with the announcement of the, the PC port studio, um, they are trying to do as best as they can to stay in this race because they know um, they might still be ahead and they might still be ahead next year and the year after that, but... Xbox is playing the long game right now, and Sony um, has a lot of work cut out for them. Um, I just want to play off that. I actually had a lot of thoughts, but that's now come to a big, uh, a big prediction. Get the fridge, get the magnet out. A little, I don't know, whatever kind of shape you want. We're putting this one on the fridge. I'm keeping it up there. Uh, I feel as though Sony. Not now, maybe not in five years, but maybe in 10 years, who knows? Sony is going to become a niche game uh, console developer company a la Nintendo, um, where they hang out mostly with first party games on their own hardware that does its own thing that's for their, uh, you know, for their group. And I think third party and, and everything else might go to this streaming future that Microsoft has billions of dollars to throw behind. Um, and I don't know if that's 100% the move, but I just feel like Microsoft can play this war of attrition where they just keep buying studios. Eventually, I know it's taken them like 10 years since they started buying things. Eventually, good games are going to come out. They're going to be exclusive. Eventually, Starfield's coming out. We're only a year and a bit away. Um, you know, these, these promised games from Microsoft are eventually going to happen. Uh, and that's going to start rivaling the like Sony's games. Um, but also I just think, uh, I just think eventually over time, uh, I lost my point, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, Sony will run out of money to be able to keep, uh, just buying other, uh, studios. And I think they're really just going to have to kind of do their own niche thing. It's an understandable prediction. I just yeah. think Sony is going to go down swinging. Like they're going to hold on as long as they I possibly agree. can. Oh, I think they're going to go down long. I just think at a certain point they won't be able to keep acquiring studios, um, and they're just going to have to kind of keep making great games that are awesome and, and really good. Um, but they're also going to be for a specific kind of audience. This... And I think general gaming might roll hang out more on the PC, Xbox, streaming dongle, weird uh, universe that is in the future. I mean. Yeah. Uh... Aside from like COD and like Assassin's Creed and stuff like that, the Sony first party games still chart at the top when they come out. Like right now, they still are not niche. The, the PlayStation 5 is, for all that we know at the moment, still greatly outselling uh, Xbox Series X and S. So I think that's an understandable prediction, but I do think that, that if that happens, that's still a, quite a ways off. Yeah, I guess my thought is like it. Like, yeah, sure, Sony's going to sell more consoles, but overall, um, every person playing a game on Game Pass on PC is basically playing an Xbox. You know, what I mean, or, yeah. or anyone playing anything on their their iPad and using game streaming, that's an Xbox. I, I and just, so I think that's going to change things. I just think it's hard to say right now that something is going to be niche when it's for two straight generations so far. Right now, it is the the best selling console. So yeah. it's, it's hard that's, to say that that would become said. niche. I, I I get that. I like that. Uh, I like that a little bit. That's uh, the refutation. I, I yeah. I, I get what you're saying entirely. I just feel like maybe that's like a ten year down the line thing. I mean, look at like saying Mario was niche, right? I'm not saying it's not like the most popular game. Mario Odyssey was insanely popular, but then you know that was a console seller for Switch. And then how often do you play another Mario game, or or how many how often do you go and play Call of Duty on your Switch? Well, you don't. 
you bought it to play Mario. And right. I think maybe that'll be the case with, with PlayStation. You buy it to play Last of Us. You buy it to play, uh, you know, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. And then you go and play your other random games on uh, what, and again, not an Xbox, but on Microsoft's terms, basically, that whatever that is. That makes sense. I, I, I can understand that. Uh, almost like almost like an art house console in a way. That's exactly, and that's what I think Nintendo kind of is in its own way. Yeah. It's a fun console, and I think Sony could be the art house console. I think I think there's a place for that. Josh, I y'all, y'all have pretty much made just about every point I I could have made. <laughs> uh, so I'll I'll, I'll kind of leave it short. But uh, I have always been kind of an Xbox fan, so it's nice to finally see them come out and be like, all right. We were awful this past generation, like demonstrably terrible and had nothing to our name other than like Gears of War and like what that attempted recore game that was just like like oh. dog water. Like, oh. like it's just they've had nothing to their name. Halo hasn't been great. And they're finally just saying they're just finally nutting up or shutting up and just said, fuck it. We'll throw our big Microsoft dick around and buy as much stuff as we possibly can. Um, and I think finally we're going to see some good Microsoft games because generally when Microsoft puts their money where their mouth is, you get games like Halo. Like you yep. get the original Gears of War and maybe we'll get more of like more like that. But I'm just hoping that's going to be the case because I think Xbox just from a just from a corporate business standpoint, I think they're winning the console war. But from a sales perspective, you know, I'd say generally PlayStation is winning um, from for all intents and purposes. But you know, I, I don't know where we'll be in in ten or so years, uh, but I I I almost think the niche thing with PlayStation could very much be a, a reality at some point. Now, when I say niche, do I mean a low selling console by any means? No, but just so much as you know, to hell with the Call of Duty. You know, give us even more high quality, you know, Uncharted level games. Um, and Paul, to echo that, I think I think that's an interesting point. And I think maybe 10, 15 years down the line, we could be there once streaming is a little more applicable of a service and the internet's way more consistent. And, you know, maybe fiber is more of an option for everyone else. Mm-hmm. Any final thoughts on the big question? Before we move on, I just want to ask you guys, everyone, just a, just a yes or no. In five years, will Game Pass be on the PlayStation consoles? Paul, no, I, I just don't think it'll PlayStation. Oh, sorry, you said no. Yes or no? Nope. Josh, <laughs> ah, no, no. Mike, no, no. But it might be on the Switch. Yeah, I can see. As, as, yeah, I as a streaming, as a streaming uh, platform. Yeah. All right, very good, guys. Let's move on to name that game. <clears throat> Hey, 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 I know Let's this week go. it's going to be clever. I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> In Name That Game, I give the panelists up to 10 clues. The clues start off more vague and progressively get more specific. The, pers- the first panelist to guess correctly wins. You only get one guess. If you're wrong, you're out. And the answer is not Glover. We take game title suggestions ah. from our $1 plus supporters over on Patreon at patreon.com slash goodnightgroups. So go on, head on over there. Toss us a dollar if you'd like, and, and you can suggest a game, a game title for uh, Name That Game. All right, are we ready? Let's go, baby. This game sold nearly 6 million units. Clue two. This game holds a score of 94 on Metacritic. Clue three. This game first released in 2006. It's Oblivion. No. Fuck! All right, well, I, had to, I, had to, I had to put my eggs in one basket. The next clue. This game won the 2007 Golden Joystick Awards Ultimate Game of the Year. You don't know? You don't I know? I think I know it now. I, I think I know it now. Golden right. joysticks? Anyway. 2007? <laughs> this game originally released on the Xbox 360, but came to the PC a year later. This game was published by Microsoft Game Studios. This game was developed 
by Epic Games. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It. Gears of War? Gears of War. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I it was Halo, and then you're like, Epic Games, and I'm like, oh, fuck. I was thinking Halo. You got it. Epic Games. I was like, wasn't that Cliffy B? I was in high school. I don't remember shit. Very we good. <laughs> it's Man. funny because the next, uh, the previous segment, Josh mentioned Gears of War a couple times, and I was like, oh, yeah. shit. I was just thinking, too. I was like, it was like 2006. I was probably making a podcast with you about something stupid. Probably. <laughs> We're probably watching the, the Golden Joystick Awards. Uh, yeah, at that time, I was trying to angle how I was going to get my parents to let me buy Gears of War. Yeah. Um, so the, the the clues that we didn't get to were the genre is third person shooter. The game was supposed to receive a film adaptation a long time ago. And the final clue, the game's violence bothered some people. You could say it ground their gears. Uh, <laughs> you, you wanted us to think it was Halo, right? That was the trick. No. I, um, I, I wasn't even when thinking you said that. Like that too with the, I was thinking that that really sounds like Halo before the ground your gears, but uh, I was like, Halo 3 is 2007. I know it. it's not this. No, yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, I was stuck on Halo versions. Yeah, And then you said Epic, and I'm like, oh, I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Didn't Oblivion release in 2006? I That's think what it, I, I need think it did. Yeah, I think it did. I did. Yes. All right. I had the right. Mm -hmm. I had the right idea. You were in the right era. You were right year. Yeah, Wrong right game. Year. Right year. Yeah. All right, moving on to audience questions. Every week we address two or three audience questions, comments, or concerns. We take questions from our supporters over on Patreon at patreon.com slash goodnightgroups. The $1 tier will get you access to question submissions. We also take submissions from gamegroups at gmail.com and in the YouTube comments. But our, Patreon, our patrons will always receive priority. Since this is episode two and we haven't open it up uh, really until this point. I've made these questions up myself. <laughs> Question number one. Oh, oh he's going to be fun ones. <laughs> From Emnot Rayal of Madrid. <laughs> Did the pandemic over the last year or so change how you play games? No oh, shit. Great question. Who's got Who's got a good answer to this one to start off with? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll run with it. Yeah. Drastically. Um, not just because like, I, I got sick of games at about halfway through, uh, cause <laughs> we, it was all there was to do. Like, yeah, America yeah. like kind of opened up, but it was still pretty limited in what you could do. Like breweries were still like sketchy to go to, uh, you know, you couldn't do certain things. A anyways, I, I, what it led me to was streaming on Twitch, like in June and July, I was just so bored doing nothing. It's like, fuck it. Just stream and talk to people. Get that entertainment as best you can. So it kind of changed to me playing games for my own enjoyment to playing games where I could interact with people while focusing on the game and kind of having to interlace those two. And it made this unique combination of, I'm going to play this game I may not normally play, uh, but I still have fun because I can you know interlace that with chat and people that are playing and still get a good experience out of it. Um, you know, still played my usual things, just more since we were in the house more often. But it 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 definitely changed the type of games I played, and you know, it made games more of a social experience. I, I think since you couldn't do it with people in the house. I'll I'll go real quick. Um, yeah, similar to Josh. I mean, I I streamed a little bit during the pandemic, so that changes the way that you play games, just because there is more interaction with with chat. Um, you know, you're picking games maybe based on what's going to do well on a stream. Um, but I also, like, really dove into different MMOs over the pandemic and, like, going into, like, anal you know, analyzing them and actually, like, looking at them from a, a design uh, perspective that I ne hadn't necessarily done in the past. Um, I really got, like, very academic about MMOs over the over the pandemic, which is uh, nerdy as shit. Uh, <laughs> but but I enjoyed it, um, and that's that's really the only thing that changed for me as far as that. But yeah, you, you know, the deeper dive in MMOs and in streaming. Um, what about you, Paul? I'll say right now, um, 
I have a real answer and a meme answer. <clears throat> Pardon me. The meme answer is that uh, just before the pandemic, I got super into playing Plague Inc. Um, and that kind of turned, I, the pandemic really ruined that for me. So <laughs> kind of a bummer. I like, I bought like the upgraded version with the, with everything. They tried to come up with a version where you cure things. It just well, I remember like you and I, mm -hmm. you, me and Spencer, our, our other buddy, uh, we, in like February, we were literally talking about how we were yeah. playing a bunch of Plague Inc. I was playing so much. I was at, at my job, like there was nothing to do all day. Uh, <laughs> and I just, uh, no one came into my, my uh, sales job. And I just sat there and uh, played, played Inc. all Plague Inc. all day. It was so amazing. And I remember kind of hearing silently in the background, not silently, I mean, hearing silently, um, hearing quietly in the background of the TV, you know, like, oh, there's a couple of cases and a couple of things here. And I'm thinking like, oh, okay, like, ha, 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 I'll, I'll name my Plague Inc. virus COVID-19. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, that aged like milk. Uh, <laughs> so felt a little bad about that after. I think the real um, pandemic actually did better than most of my Plague Inc. pandemics. Oh, I was very, I had some great. <laughs> Shout out to the real pandemic, the original goat. Really <laughs> beat Plague Inc.'s ass. It even got to fucking Madagascar. Wow, great. Shout out to the real one. The real one yeah. out there. Did they get to Greenland? Is the Jesus question. This Christ. is not. This is terrible. We we apologize to everyone out there. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. So anyway, but no. More seriously, um, I felt that it did. Uh, it allowed me to play socially a lot more. I think it was a lot. Hard, it was a lot easier for us to get together and play games together. Um, something I couldn't do pre-pandemic because we all had different work schedules. Everything was so crazy. Uh, Matt, you and I, and uh, the silent group, as I'll call him, uh, Spencer, who uh, isn't here right now, but he, uh, we all played uh, Sea of Thieves like every night for a few weeks straight, I feel like. Conan um, Exiles. We, we, we played WoW together again. Like We just started playing a lot of games together that we weren't doing before because we could sit around for four hours every night like we were in high school again and play games, which was amazing. Uh, and, uh, you know, it becomes a lot harder again when we all have to go back to work and we all have different schedules and things like that. So it was really cool to play with my friends again, I would say. That was a cool difference. Mike. Yeah. Um, yeah, it completely changed. I stopped playing, like, my Switch because my switch was my all right guys are coming over we're just gonna hang out play a switch game i'd buy some stupid ten dollar switch game party game and we'd play it uh stop doing that and like i'm a huge tabletop gaming guy i've got a ton of board games i couldn't play any of them um so yeah i i did do the streaming thing i'm still doing the streaming thing um yeah, that helped get me a little bit more social, but I think for the most for the most part, especially at the beginning, I didn't really know what to play because I would just sit here and by myself, not knowing what to do. Um, I tried to do other hobbies and, and didn't interest me. So, um streaming really helped uh, i played some games that i don't think i would have played because they were single player but because they were single player and there were people watching me then i felt like playing them like, i don't think i would have played dark souls 3 um if not to just you know flex on my audience um but like i i had all these single player games that i wasn't gonna play like i wasn't going to just sit down by myself and play because after college i was like i need social contact so i think the pandemic really helped in that regard to kind of cull my steam library a little bit <laughs> there you go at least slightly this next question comes from it's a fabricatio of sicily how do you <laughs> <laughs> what's it supposed to be like what's the it's a fabrication yeah it's a fabrication it's a fabrication <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, we're just gonna get to question. Well, you guys, it's, I don't think Mr. Fabricatio would appreciate that. Okay, it's true. It's true. All right. True. Apologies to uh, M. Fabricatio. How do you personally weigh gameplay versus visuals versus story or lore when looking at, at a potential game to play? Josh, let's go to you first. Oh, good question. Uh, so I play a lot of WoW. Big surprise. Uh, so not the visuals, not the story of the lore, and not the gameplay. 
Yeah, so none of them. <laughs> Can we put nostalgia in there? Because I feel like that's a big reason why most of us play half the games we play. It's, a, it's actually just all drugs. Uh, <laughs> no, so I, visuals are like not that important to me. I mean, they're they're nice. I like to look at pretty things, and when they when they happen, it's like cool. But it's not the main reason I'm picking out a game. I've played WoW for years, and it's I still play it to this day. It's not something that brings me in. WoW Classic is one of the best MMOs I've played in a long while. And it looks awful. Um, <laughs> look at Old School RuneScape, for example. Even it's hooked me in before. Um, gameplay, I'd say, is probably the most important thing. Um, you know, I've played some very pretty shooters. Um, and, and it goes a long way. But at the end of the day, if your game doesn't feel great, I'm, I'm just not that. I'm not going to be that interested in it. It has to feel good at the end of the day. Overwatch looks cartoony. And while I don't really play it much anymore, what hooked me in so much is the gameplay was just buttery smooth. Yeah. Um, again, something I think Blizzard nails. You know, Diablo is kind of a terrible game, just ba on the basis of like story and all that. But at the end of the day, it's fun to hop in there and just kill some demons. It just feels kind of good uh, and weighty. And Bing Bang Boom. Uh, and obviously, story and lore holds some weight for me. I mean, I think it matters. Uh, Elder Scrolls, for example, being a big one, the Fallout world draws me in. So if the Fallout world is there, chances are I'm going to be interested at in what. It's what kept me into Fallout 76 for as long as it did, uh, was just strictly on the fact that, oh, this is a Fallout world, so let's just explore and see what kind of story and lore I can find here. Um, so I got a little rambly there, but I guess if we had to give it a score, uh, we're giving gameplay at the uh, S tier. Uh, we're going <laughs> to give uh, story and lore uh, A tier, and then we're going to give uh, visuals somewhere in a D tier. Uh, okay. So, yeah. What about you, Mike? Um, it's a tough one. Honestly, I would say I weigh them all the same because it really depends on what game I'm going after. I think visuals, though not important, are still kind of important. Like, I think it's becoming games... more important as time goes on. Fair. Yeah, I... Like, like Josh made the statement about, you know, like the way WoW looks, but the way WoW looks, looks fine for WoW. Like it fits with the world itself because all the world matches. It's the right like color scheme. It's the right, like everything looks the way it should um, for the graphics that it has. Um, but then you have games that just like, are off putting or there's it's too busy. Like like take a uh, Marvel Avengers. That game is beautiful. However, when you play the game, I can't see what's going on. So mm -hmm. I don't play that game. So it's like visuals are just they're important but not important in different reasons. Like I don't need a game to be beautiful 4K, but I need a game's visuals to be clear and uncluttered. Um gameplay wise, yeah, it has to feel good, but like if you take a game like um oh what's it called uh Senua's yeah, something Senua's Hellblade Senua's 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 yeah yeah that gameplay is not great but the story and lore you know carries it so and, and the experience itself carries and it so it's are like amazing visuals are amazing like at, it depends i would say <laughs> which is such a non answer but like i would say i weight them all the same one of them has to kind of stand out for me to want to play the game. If they're all just kind of middle of the road, probably won't play it. I agree with you in, in a lot of ways. I think that with visuals, it really depends on the game that I'm playing. Like if I'm playing an MMO, I really don't care what the visuals are going to be. But if I'm playing the last of us part two, I want it to look as good as it actually does because I think that facilitates the the storytelling and because it is a cinematic experience. So I need the visuals to be there to match that. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm playing a game like Hades, I, the visuals, yeah, Hades has a cool art style. It doesn't need to look amazing because the gameplay is so tight and fun, right? Um, right. I think that if a game is trying to have a good story, you better have a good story. If you don't care about your story, that's fine. But... You know, if you're if you're a game that's supposed to, that's story based, you need to have a good story. Uh, so that's when it becomes important. 
gameplay, I think, always has to pretty much be good. Um, but then, I don't know. You have – I don't play them, but I understand people who play visual novels and stuff like that. And there's really not a lot of gameplay there. But – you have the story and you have sometimes you have the visuals like look at something like disco elysium right the visuals are great for what it is uh the story and lore really good there's not a lot of gameplay there you know so um like mike said it really does depend but i think what it really comes down to is when you're propping yourself up as something you better be that uh or else it's not gonna work what about mm-hmm. you, Paul? Yeah, uh, you guys have nailed it. I'm just going to quickly go through my list of that. <clears throat> gameplay, I think uh, something that I've noticed that I think is really interesting. Uh, I love a good gameplay mechanic. You hook me with a good, clean mechanic. I'll play the whole game doing that. Uh, we played a lot of Conan Exiles last summer, and uh, climbing stuff is just <laughs> the best for me in that game. It's kind of janky, but just I feel like having an open world kind of like MMO light kind of game where you can climb the walls, you can climb around on the roofs. It's just, I love climbing in games. Uh, it's, and like you were saying, Josh, uh, you know, Overwatch just being so tight, just games with a great, clean feel. The Leviathan Axe and God of War, I found, oh, I mean, yeah. God of War is an incredible game, 10 out of 10, but also, you know, there's parts where sometimes the movement's a little janky, a little slow. It's intended to be that way. Um, but all you needed to do was hook me with the Leviathan Axe mechanics and I'll play the whole game just shooting it out and throwing it back every single time. Um, so that's huge to me. Uh, one good mechanic will hook me gameplay-wise. Um, in terms of visuals, I, I, I'm kind of on the same realm as you, Matt. I don't think I necessarily 100% agree about the genres just because I mean that, that's all personal preference. I, I know that... Uh, you tried to get me to play Rift a lot recently, and I just, I can't, <laughs> like, I can't, it looks like the ugliest piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> All right, well, let's not go that far. <laughs> well, that's what I'm but Here's the thing, here's my point, is that I think that's the risk you take when you take a visual style where the visual style is meant to look realistic, and I think that's the problem where you get with, look at Lord of the Rings Online versus WoW, when that came out, they were around the same time, Lord of the Rings Online looked like shit, like even in a couple years, because they were you know, not trying, uh, they weren't stylized like, wow. So, um, so I think like you're saying, Matt, a game, uh, visual style, just, just nail what you're going for, pick a style and, and just nail it. Uh, and the more stylized it is, the easier it's going to be to go for. So I, I see why everything's doing it like that now. Um, yeah. In addition, story-wise, uh, I don't care about story most of the time if the gameplay is good and, and it's about, it's a gameplay kind of game. Uh, you know, if it's like a shooter or, a, or a, an arcade kind of game, but yeah, in a visual novel or, uh, you know, a choices matter game, something like, you know, I just played Detroit become human. I uh, had me weeping like a damn baby. That was great. And, uh, you know, story obviously matters. Um, but you know, that's that. And, uh, yeah, in terms of lore, you know, I'm, I'm open. Uh, I think lore is cool, uh, is a cool bonus once you become enthralled in a world. Um, I love to see it, but I don't have a whole lot of opinions on, uh, if it'll make or break the game. I don't think it will. Usually, actually, and if anything, it turns me off sometimes of certain games, and that's just my own preference. I think, like, an extensive lore, you start playing the game, and they start giving you backstory to, like, 10 different kingdoms and the things that have happened in the last 300 years, and that just... Yeah, I hate that. Like, I, I, I love the kind of lore you see or something, and I almost say lore more than story in something like Dark Souls, where you just kind of discover the world as you go, and I, and I think that's cool. Um, that's a cool way to do lore as opposed to long strings of exposition. But jumping off of that, who... Paul couldn't get into The Witcher Three. Just so we're yeah, we're I couldn't get into The Witcher Three because yeah. I just think there was too much. I who just am think I podcasting with? The world is built. <laughs> the world is so built. Everyone expects you to know who everyone is. You're this made character, and I just I just felt like I was I wasn't I wasn't Geralt, so I wasn't doing a good job being Geralt. Uh, so I don't know, but, uh, yeah, but then we have friends like, uh, like Matt, I have a friend like Matt or again, Spencer, the resident silent groove, he will sit there and play tyranny or pillars of eternity and all these games with like massively long lore things that I just, I could never do. I think a good example on like a mass scale of how typically gameplay is King is destiny Two, Cause the gunplay yeah. is just so good that people just play that game because it just feels so good, even though, yeah. Um, everything around it, uh, debatable. I, I obviously yeah. there are people that like Destiny for all that it is, but um, everything around it, you know, isn't for everyone. But the it's hard to disagree with the gameplay or, or with the gunplay. It, it it just feels so good. 
I'll re-download it literally occasionally every like three months just yeah. to play the gameplay for like a week and then I'm done with it for the next like three or four months. Yeah, Matt and I did that Matt recently. We, we played it for a week or so. We ran around the sparrows and we shot some stuff. We had no idea where the hell we were or what the hell the story was, but it was a great time for the week that we played it. <laughs> All I'm saying is uh, bring back Peter Dinklage. Oh, God. All the right. Came from the moon. <laughs> Wizards from the moon. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> to aimless last words guys what are what is your meaningless final phrase for the audience this week josh what is your meaningless final phrase for the audience this week uh, raise hell praise dale <laughs> uh, <laughs> mike what is your meaningless Which final phrase me, by the way sorry oh. can we play some forza later I, i'd love to we should all get on forza G, uh, I, i'd love to play some forza horizon with someone <laughs> Hell yeah. Mike, what's your meaningless final phrase for the audience this week? Um, If Link's armor doesn't break, why doesn't he make weapons out of that? <laughs> Let me smack you with my pants. And can Link, and can Link, can Link even make armor? That he himself cannot destroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's pretty good, Paul. What's your meaningless final phrase for the audience this week? We talked about Todd. Xbox is God. Rockstar got hate. Hope New World's great. Oh, Damn. a poem. Look at that. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And then I, I, I want to play wind chimes, but I don't have any. So just imagine wind chimes in the background. <laughs> a wonderful ending for the hopeless MMO romantic. Yep. Yeah. My final meaningless phrase for the audience this week is this weekend, make sure to face your fireworks away from your friends and family. All right. No pointing. That's fire. not meaningless. That's a very <laughs> meaningful. <laughs> That's topic. a very <laughs> helpful topic. <Yeah. laughs> I will I'm, no I'm longer shoot, shoot my family members shoot. with Roman candles. I'm trying to be <laughs> trying trying to be a little uh, a little helpful about it. I'm gonna change your meaningless <laughs> phrase to what you already said, which was "Let me slap you with my pants." Wow. I, really, really, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was it for a minute. Approved. Approved. We yeah, can change yeah. it. <laughs> anyway. Thank you all so much for joining us here on Game Groups, the Game Groups podcast, the all-encompassing gaming podcast from the Goodnight Groups. If you really like the show, we encourage you to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash goodnightgroups, where we currently have three different tiers available. Any and all support is greatly appreciated and will go a long way in improving all of the Goodnight Groups. Give us those Groove dollars, baby. Those Groove coins. Yeah. <laughs> the Drift th coin to the moon. The three, that is our logo. The three dollar plus tier will get you access to the show. This show, two days early. That means you're getting it Friday instead of Sunday. And a special shout out to all of our patrons currently supporting us at the five dollar plus tier. They are as follows: Ishmael Salgado. We love you, Ish. And that's Thank it. you so Round much. Round of applause for Ish, baby. Let's go. Thank you, Ish. Let's go. You, <laughs> love Thank you, Ish. Number Ish. one. Number one. Alive. Keeping the dream alive. You can join that list with Ish by visiting the Patreon. We also ask that you take a couple minutes to drop a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or leave a like and comment on the YouTube video. Everything helps, guys. Everything helps. Feed the algorithm. Ring that bell, baby. Ring that bell. Feed Ring the, that notification bell feed so the you beast. can get notifications every time we post classic <laughs> make sure to check out goodnightgroups.com for all of our content where you'll find the blog the gg replay this podcast and more coming soon that'll do it for us here today gentlemen thank you for joining me we're out hey, thanks for having us good night groups thanks.